Hello, Kurt Jackson, Retirement Income Strategist with KJ Financial in Liberty, Missouri, here with this week's installment of Your Money Matters. Uh, this is part of our series of, of uh, Your Money Matters from the, uh, the confessions from a traditional or typical financial advisor. Last week, we started uh, the first part of kind of a, a two part series inside of our series on uh, financial insanity. We got through most of it. We're going to finish up that, that today. I uh, actually recorded this a couple weeks ago because I'm in uh, in uh, uh, scenic uh, De Des Moines, Iowa this week with my oldest daughter, Jordan. Playing, uh, She's playing softball in her World Series, so we recorded this last week, but I put it up. Uh, figured I'd have a little bit of time to get this put up uh, this week. So uh, while we recorded this last week, the, the information is still there. So we're going to pick up where we left off on financial insanity. And we're going to talk about, uh, we've been talking about qualified plans, your 401ks, that type of 403B, 457 plan. Uh, and, and we've been talking about the problems inside of there. And one of the things, um, the biggest part of that is uh, we call it the target date funds, life cycle funds. Uh, and uh, it's really been a disaster for people because the most popular vehicle inside of a 401k and other qualified plans has, becomes this, has become this target date fund. And it's, you know, we're overwhelmed with options of, of endless mutual funds, investors, and and employer, they all, all of us love that. Let's set it and forget it. Simplicity. You know, you just pick the year that you're going to retire, and sit back, relax, no worries. All right. It sounds so simple, and I think that's what we all strive for with our money because we don't really understand money, and and that's, I understand that, and that's too bad because it leaves you open to get uh to have you know, get taken advantage of. See, a, a professionally managed fund that automatically reallocates money periodically to assure investment risk lowers as retirement approaches. Okay, that's the theory behind a target date fund. Instead of having to manually take, make continued adjustments in your portfolio to secure your retirement funds from stock market risk as the years progress, a target date fund purports to do that for you. So, you know, what could possibly go wrong? You know, well, the market crashed in 2008, and participants in the 2010, they were planning on retiring in 2010 retirement funds, well, the people who, uh, yeah, uh, they lost substantially. See, in some cases, target date funds dropped even more than the S&P 500 did. Ouch, right? Target date funds were supposed to glide in for a safe and secure retirement landing, but most of the target date parachuters fa parachutes failed to open. The bulk of many tar target date funds were still in the stock market, even as retirement dates approached or even passed, okay? thus failing to protect the investors' retirement funds. And unfortunately, strategies have not changed, and the result was going to be the same the next time the stock market drops. See, there's many other issues with this fund as well. Performance has been lackluster at best, disastrous at worst. Their predetermined formula, formulaic uh, design doesn't allow for drastic reallocations in response to market conditions. And fees are as high as funds within a fund. Many have fees upon fees. And ironically, although target date funds aim to simplify investment decisions, they're tremendously confusing. Without analyzing the pages of fine print that the auto investing target market was hoping to avoid in the first place, there's no way to know what a fund's comprised of See, target date funds with the same target year, but target date year from, but from different, different companies can vary wildly, creating a buyer beware situation for a product that un un unfortunately continues to sell itself. I had a client um, that had been in life cycle funds for over the last 10 years and had done very poorly in them. Um, in fact, they had to compound it the where she she's at 12 year was 12 years from retirement age and they had posted that if you keep contri contributing at this level you'll have a you know this an income of, of like it was like 44 4300 dollars a month 43 4400 dollars a month well i ran the numbers on that and in order for that to have happened with what she was doing and what she had already had in there that that target date fund would have had to earn returns that it's never earned so that's very scary for for her, and I mean, luckily she met with us, and we've got a plan worked out for. Her. But how many other people at her employer, or other employers that are utilizing these life cycle funds, target date funds, whatever they want to call it, how many of those people are really getting hurt by that? 
whatever happened to saving? I mean, typical financial planning downplays saving in favor of investing, right? Assets under management. While saving money has been talked, you know, we talked about fondly, actually, actually establishing a truly adequate mutual fund, or, or, or I'm sorry, emergency fund, and building liquidity into one's personal economy gets more than just very little lip service. See, many, many Americans think that they're saving in their 401k, but as a result, they don't actually have money when they need it. In 2011, as the recession continued, there was over 40, or I'm sorry, over 57 billion dollars cashed out of 401k plans early, costing plan participants penalties, fees, as well as taxes, plus the opportunity cost of pulling that out. One study reported as many as one in four Americans are borrowing from retirement accounts to pay bills, such as their mortgage, college tuition, even credit card payments. Saving and investing are both important, and it's actually saving, not investing, that builds our financial foundation and flexibility. Saving appropriately will enable us to later invest without resorting to liquidating our investments every time we have a financial emergency. But saving isn't just for those who are starting out and establishing emergency funds. Saving is an essential lifelong habit that provides liquidity to one's life and one's business. See, uh, alternative retirement income strategies teach people to save before and during the investing part, to save for opportunities as well as emergencies, and to measure opportunity costs before paying cash for major purchases like automobiles and homes and those types of things. But where you can safely um, save, where your money can out, we got to find a place where you can safely save and where your money can outpace inflation. The low interest rate environment has turned uh, accumulated wealth into mere trickles of income, right? These days, even multi-millionaires are challenged by living off interest if it's held in bank savings accounts and certificates of deposit. Alternative retirement income strategies utilize a safe, reliable, tax-advantaged cash alternative with multiple benefits and tremendous flexibility that end up likely generating stronger returns. Well, they definitely do stronger returns than bank accounts, CDs, money markets, and um, even some annuities and, and treasury bills. For those who also have an established savings, we utilize proven vehicles, growth vehicles or alternative cash flow vehicles that can pay steady monthly payments. Our recommended growth vehicles do not roller coaster ride with the stock market and our cash flow investments generate healthy returns year in and year out. Now let's talk a little bit about the banks. Uh, speaking as we speak about saving money, right? Everyone assumes that the safest place for your money is in an FDIC insured account. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve only has the equivalent of about 2% of the nation's bank deposits in their reserves. Now this means that if there was ever a rot on the banks, it would soon become evident that the banking system is just one enormous fractional reserve banking Ponzi scheme. Look at what's happening in Greece right now. Bank, they keep they close the banks and people couldn't get access to their money because they were worried about a run on the banks. People think, oh, that'd never happen here. Well, think again, it could. The financial system doesn't have to collapse for you to you to lose savings. Cyber crimes and fraud they strip money from bank accounts each and each and every year. And government agencies such as the IRS and local law enforcement have also been known to confiscate funds from bank accounts in a process known as civil asset fortune forfeiture and shockingly wrongdoing merely needs to be suspected and not proven for that to happen however the most likely thief to steal your money from a from your bank account is inflation at current bank rates having money in the bank is guaranteed that you're losing money slowly with certainty uh, alternative retirement income strategies utilizes an alternative to the big banks for start uh, for uh, storing cash safely and a cash flow alternative to CDs that generate substantial cash flow for those who need their investments to earn more income. See, the sad truth is that Americans are being sold a pathway to wealth by the financial industry that is actually leading us in the wrong direction. See, our primary investments have brought us great insecurity and the inability to, to truly plan or count on anything. The inducements to stop working at age 65, right? 
have also betrayed us. We have less stability, less control, uh, less real prosperity than ever before. Okay? To complicate matters further, many Americans are getting financial advice from those who are not even obliged to advise investors according to the investor's best interests. Brokerage houses and financial, represent re financial representatives operate from a suitability standard, which means they must sell products that are suitable for your situation, i.e. your risk-averse retired grandmother can't have her nest egg placed in aggressive stocks. But they can recommend funds or products that pay them the highest commissions, even if it's not the best option for you. Avoid planners that operate, or I'm sorry, advise, not avoid, but advisors, it's Monday morning as I record this. Advisors and planners that operate from a fiduciary standard or platform commit to serving the best interests of their clients, even if that means not selling a product at all. However, one of the things you got to worry about with fiduciary standards, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to receive recommendations for the best option. And that's because most financial advisors operate from a limited perspective and with little awareness of alternative products and strategies, the alternative retirement strategies that we talk about all the time, that might be a better choice. And that's why we assert that typical financial planning and advice is insane. Okay? Keep doing the same things over and over and over again, expecting a different result. Where did it all go wrong? Right? How did we get into this mess? And more importantly, how do we protect ourselves and escape the insanity? That's what we try to do with our, our uh, um, alternative retirement income strategies. Are they perfect? No, nothing's perfect. But from what I've researched and what I've found and what I've experienced, they offer a much better alternative than all of the uh, traditional retirement strategies. Those don't those aren't, aren't focused on you. It's focused on the people providing it. The com big companies, Wall Street, all that. It seems, like, it seems to me like Wall Street and the government are in cahoots together to pull as much money out of your pocket as they can as possible and put it into their pocket. Uh, so not that alternative strategies don't earn money. Everybody's going to earn some money. But wouldn't it make sense to have them earn less? If they earn less, doesn't that leave more for you? That's that's how I look at it. Once again, I try to run the numbers on everything. So, uh, but I, I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope you found some value in this. If you did, please share uh, it with your friends, family, coworkers, anyone that you care about. Make sure that you keep tuning in, uh, tuning in week after week. We try to do one of these every week. I snuck one in this week since I recorded them both last week because I knew I was going to be gone this week. Uh, so we actually got one while I'm, at, I'm not. I'm actually not in the office this week. But, uh, uh, and then also keep in mind that we're running that contest now where you get to answer once a week. You get a chance to answer four times a month. Uh, and I've got some other incentives that, that I put out at times if you're a friend with me on Facebook or on uh, uh, LinkedIn where you can share it and uh, share my contest and and uh, uh, get, get extra um, entries into it. But once a month we're going to pull a name out of the people that answered the excuse me, question right or followed some other instructions. And you win a $100 gift card. To have dinner on me at some at uh, a local restaurant. So, hope you're doing that. Hope you're having a great week. Uh, hopefully, my daughter's winning some games. Her team's winning some games this week, and we will talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in.